Hi, I'm Steve Sample with Bama Talk. Don't miss a single episode of Bama Talk Show available now on iTunes, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast app and on the web at bigbrainsmedia.com. This is your Weather Extreme video for Sunday, February the 24th. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Thanks for tuning in. And if you got up early this morning, you saw some interesting fog. There's a look at the sky cam from Birmingham this morning, and you can see that fog lying there below the tops of the buildings, actually. Look at Trustful, and the fog doesn't seem to be quite as thick, but we can see it lying in the valleys. And then I got this just before I started preparing the video. This is a little newer shot from the Inverness sky cam, and you can see that the fog's pretty dense in spots out there. Surface high pressure is centered over Illinois. Is keeping things rather tranquil over the eastern half of the country, but that's likely to change here pretty soon thanks to an upper-level closed low that is coming out of the central Rockies and southern Rockies and will be moving across the Red River Valley over the next couple of days, bringing severe weather and uh, rain to the southeastern United States. This morning, temperatures are pretty chilly with single-digit values uh, in places like Iowa and uh, up through uh, Wisconsin and Minnesota, so uh, very, very cool values up there. Fairly mild across the southern tier of the United States and 75 at Key West, isn't that something? Across central Alabama, we've got, first of all, a lot of fog out there with visibility is very, very low and dense fog advisory until 9 a.m., but temperatures generally in the 30s and some freezing fog up in the northeastern sections. That surface low plus the upper low is generating a number of different uh, winter weather advisories all the way from northeastern New Mexico across the Texas panhandle and parts of the Oklahoma area uh, up across Kansas and into parts of Missouri, Iowa, and uh, Illinois. So that's uh, going to be a problem for those folks up there. But for us down here, we've got a severe weather issue to deal with, plus we've got rain and uh this is going to be um, going to have to be looking at how february is going to shape up here but looks like it's going to end on a wet note and that could bring february into some record values looks like one to three inches will be possible over alabama with the gradient from the least amount in the northwest corner of the state and the highest amount in the southeast corner of the state Storm Prediction Center's day one outlook shows a, a slight risk for severe storms in, uh, oh, I guess I'd call that central Texas, basically. And then uh, day two, which is Monday into early Tuesday, the slight risk is from Houston across to about Tallahassee and Savannah. Uh, and there's a big question about that. We'll talk about that in just a minute when we get to the forecast maps. Day three, the slight risk uh, shifts over into extreme north Florida and along the southeastern coast of the U.S., all right, we've got a lot to talk about, so let's hit the charts running here. This is the 06E GFS model run. We'll supplement it with a couple of other shots with the NAM and, and European as well. And you can see the high pressure will be migrating across the eastern half of the country, and uh, that certainly is part of the reason why we've got some uncertainties about how far north the severe weather risk will be. By Monday, that closed Upper low is coming out of the Rockies across the Red River Valley and certainly is a very potent storm system. Beneath that, we'll see a strong surface low. Uh, that is uh, at least 996 millibars uh, coming across uh, the Red River Valley in the vicinity of the Dallas-Fort Worth area with a cold front stretching down into the northwestern Gulf. Now, part of the uncertainty is, and the GFS is suggesting, that the warm front gets up to about about Montgomery or so. And I think actually that looks like that's a pretty good position. But note, if you will, the cold air damming that is occurring. And so we, we've got two things going on here. Uh, how far north will the warm front come and how strong will the cold air damming be or what we call the wedge? And um, I think the wedge is going to win out. So I'm uh, pretty much thinking that the severe weather threat stays pretty much across the southern part of uh, Alabama. There's a look at uh, the zero to uh, three kilometer helicity. And of course, that, you know, is uh, high, uh, high values. So we certainly have the shear that we need. When you look at the Cape values, this is the NAM. The NAM and the GFS are not quite in agreement. The NAM, I don't think, brings the uh, warm front quite as far north. So those are the Cape values pretty much hugging the coast. The GFS, on the other hand, does bring the Cape values up a little bit higher. And these are all at 21Z. Tomorrow it's uh, 
uh, roughly around uh, 3 p.m. And then uh, finally, I wanted to look at uh, the dew points, and the dew points basically stay the best across the southern part of the state, and you can see the effects of the wedge coming in there. So the bottom line is I believe that the severe weather threat is quite real, but it's primarily going to be to the south of Birmingham and uh, perhaps from about, uh, say, Livingston to Selma to Montgomery to just north of Eufaula, kind of in that area. Moving out to Tuesday, the upper closed low moves across the Mid-South, as does the surface low. The front should advance through, and that should mean that Tuesday, while we'll see clouds sticking in, we should see uh, it cooling down. We're going to be one of those days where temperatures don't change much during the day, and we may see some sprinkles as well with wraparound moisture. By Wednesday, that closed low is up uh, approaching the eastern Great Lakes and carving out a pretty good trough over the eastern half of the country, and that's going to be setting the stage for much colder air, the surface low moving into the Great Lakes, uh, eastern Great Lakes as well. You can see the 540 line as a reference uh, getting into northwest Alabama. On Thursday, uh, that overall uh, closed low is continuing to carve out a uh, long wave trough position over the eastern half of the country. Um, so uh, we see that the surface low moves up into the mid-Atlantic area and into the vicinity of New York City. And we also see that the 540 line doesn't advance much yet. But on Friday, we see that there is a reinforcing shot of cold air. And notice that the fetch coming out of central Canada. So uh, we're going to be seeing some pretty cold air. And by Friday, the GFS is suggesting that the 540 line will be all the way down south of Mobile. Now, yesterday, the European and the GFS were quite different, uh, just miles and miles apart. But today, there's the European. And the European, while it's not exactly showing the 540 line as far south as the GFS, it is much more in line. So the European actually coming more in line with what the GFS was showing yesterday. When we get to, to uh, Saturday, uh, we're continuing to see these reinforcing shots of cold air. And so the 540 line stays well into the Gulf of Mexico, reaching actually down into the peninsula of Florida. And by Sunday, a week from today, we've just got this really cold pattern over the eastern half of the country. And that keeps us in, in the uh, cold air. So uh, we'll probably be mostly dry. But any of these little traveling disturbances may bring enough moisture to ring out a few flurries on Saturday or Sunday. But nothing of any significance. Now, that might change. Why? Well, if we look out into voodoo country, first thing that we see is by uh, the 6th of March, there's not a lot of change, but we're showing a pretty substantial ridge to the west of us. And that ridge, while it dampens a bit as it moves eastward, it does come over us, so it looks like a nice warm-up around the 8th. And then you notice what's following right behind that ridge. Yes, another trough, and that one Boom! It dives into the lower Mississippi River Valley and becomes a very substantial closed low around the 10th of March. What does that mean? Well, if we look below that at the surface map, it means a strong surface low, a strong cold front, the potential for severe weather, and I would say a probably a pretty substantial winter storm for the central part of the country. But remember, it's voodoo country. But we'll be watching. Kind of fun to speculate. Well, that'll do it for the Weather Extreme video for today. James Spann should be back in the saddle with the next one, first thing on Monday morning. In the meantime, stay tuned to the Alabama Weather Blog and uh, for the latest details. And don't forget to catch Storm Alert Extreme coming up at uh, Ohatchee. Pardon me, Storm Alert Tour coming up at Ohatchee on Tuesday. And then uh, we go to Clay on Thursday. Hope that you have a wonderful day and Godspeed. Thank you for trusting us to be your number one source for news in all of central Alabama. In back-to-back -back ratings periods, more people watched ABC 3340 than any other station in Birmingham.